Welcome to Modern Workplace Change. I'm Daryl Webster. We're going to be looking at meeting optimized apps within Microsoft Teams, and one in particular that I, I've been really enjoying using. Have you heard of Miro before, an interactive whiteboard? I came across Miro last year when we were trying to run interactive workshops, and Microsoft Whiteboard wasn't really cutting it. I needed to be able to organize things ahead of time and invite guests in certain ways and marshal my content around and, and get people's attention to focus on certain points on the board. So we came across Miro Interactive Whiteboard, and it is, you know, it's a great whiteboard, great tool. It's a few years ahead of um, Microsoft Whiteboard in terms of features, and uh, I really enjoy using it. Now, the recent news is that Miro has become a meeting optimized app. What is a meeting optimized app, you ask? It is about uh, being able to use a, an application without having to share your desktop. I think that's a, a good way to describe it. And that uh, attendees of the meeting can have their own individual experience and use it within the meeting. Um, so a good example of this is PowerPoint, where you can share the PowerPoint and allow people to go through the, the slides in their own pace. And Mirror Interactive Whiteboards are um, the next, uh, a uh, new meeting optimized app. Um, so we're going to take a quick look at it as we go into it. I've got a meeting invite already to go. It's the Microsoft 365 Change Clinic Meetup that I'll be planning to launch, trying to make an interactive experience for running meetups. Now you'll first notice that as I'm sending this off, there is no option at this point to add the app. I can't add Miro, so I do have to send this invite off first. And I'll go into the invite now and edit it. And now we have the option to add apps. So I'll add another tab and we'll add the Miro app. Now if this is the first time that you've done this for your organization, and uh, for yourself too, it's going to ask you to sign in. Now I've already signed in with my consulting license, so when I click add to the meeting, then I'm gonna be presented with the boards that I have access to using that account. And I'll choose session layout. Now the next step is giving permissions. What sort of permissions do I want people to have with this board in my meeting? Uh, with anyone can comment, it allows anonymous users to be able to click on an object or anywhere on the board and use a call out and create comments. Um, I'm going to use anyone can view to start off with. And this third option, private, requires people to sign in and then the permissions are managed at that board level. Uh, so let's choose anyone can view and save the board. So it's added to my meeting invite as a tab. And this also means that it's available for, um, for people who have been invited to the meeting to check that board out. You'll see that I've got uh, toolbars along here, so this is the full experience of Miro right here within the meeting invite, um, so I can make adjustments and change things. Um, so we'll just close this off at this point, and we'll go back over to Miriam's experience. So this, she's been invited to the meeting, and open up the meeting invite, and she will see the session layout, which is our interactive whiteboard for Miro. So as this loads up, Miriam's only got view only permissions. So that's great. It means that she can go around and check out the content on the board. And look, I've designed this board so that it's going to be used to present from, but also it helps people to uh, check out some of those resources ahead of time so they can get prepared for the workshop and bring their best selves along to interact. So this is the board. That's great. Okay, well, I'm going to go back in as Megan and join the meeting. So we'll do all that quickly. Just for demo purposes, we'll turn all the video and audio off. And we'll join as Miriam as well. Join with our audio. Right, so here's Megan. I'll just make this a bit bigger. And what you'll notice to start with is that the Miro app is up here with all the other apps in the Teams experience on the desktop. So I can click on that and I can see the board that I want to present. To present the board to the meeting, I'm going to choose the Share button and this will open up the Miro board within the meeting. Great, so that is Megan's experience of the meeting. And 
let's go over and see Miriam and what other people will see within the meeting too. Now, because I have shared it with the meeting, I've set it as view only, it means that guests can come along and they can view this board and um, they can at least get around and see that content. And let's now change those permissions um, so that we can get ready to, uh, to interact with this board. So back here as Megan, I'm going to change the sharing permissions from view to can edit. Now this might seem a bit risky, that now that I've turned that option on, um, does that mean that people can now uh, shift all these objects around and start typing things and all that? No, what I've done is I've also used a, another tool within this fantastic interactive whiteboard where I can... Let's use this pointer here. Let's click on that. I've locked the objects. I've selected them and grouped them. And that means that when I want people to start being able to contribute and adding uh, their thoughts and their ideas, then they'll be able to do so once I unlock it. you notice too um, that I've put my slides in here as images because I want to present from the board and keep people within this experience. And so this is a consideration uh, that I want people to follow along the content. But if we go back over to Miriam, this is Miriam. She's had quite an independent experience of the board because that's how we want it for when people are starting to work together and, um, and add their ideas and, and thoughts and start to really interact on the board. But how am I going to use this to present and get people to follow along? Well, let's go back on to... Megan again, and we'll use a tool here. I'll click on my account, signed in as Daryl, and bring everyone to me. Right. And um, I'm going to use another technique. I've used frames on the board to put my content into, to organize it, and to make it easier to present. So I've opened up the toolbar here, and using frames, let's just center that in. Then that's what I'm presenting to everyone. Let's go back over to Miriam's experience. She's now following me. See there, following Daryl. And she sees what I see. So as I go through that presentation, let's go to slide two, slide three. Miriam will now be following along that content. And so I could be drawing on the board and indicating uh, and, and trying to make certain points about that content. So that's great. Um, now we get to a point in the workshop where I want to be able to, uh, now that I've introduced the topics, I want people to be able to um, start answering some of these questions. So the way that I've designed this is that the questions are about um, the, the content we've discussed, and then we're going to use breakout rooms to be able to go through and answer these questions. So to make this available for people to use, they're all, they all have edit permissions, but I'll just zoom out. We'll use control and use the mouse wheel. And we'll click on this object again and long press to unlock. Now, they'll be able to add content to it. So this is me presenting and adding content. And if we go back over to Miriam, um, she sees that change there. Double click. Let's go back over to here. This is my idea. I'll just zoom in there. All right, so Miriam's now able to, to add content to the workshop and they can um, start to answer some of those questions. So I know this is uh, an early look at Mirror as a meeting optimized app. It does do a few unusual things that, that um, I hope will be fixed. Uh, there's a couple of other tools that you can use for presenting. Um, you can um, do a screen share within the board so that it makes people follow along. Um, if we go back over to this uh, view here of Megan, if I bring everyone to me, and then we'll go back over to Miriam's experience of that. Well, yeah, Miriam is now seeing what I see. But Miriam can break away just simply by clicking 
or moving around on the board, and um, and she'll be able to have an independent experience again of of that board. So it's it's almost there, but um, you know it's a, it's the first release of Miro as an interactive whiteboard within a Teams meeting, a meeting optimized app. Uh, but I think it's it's a, a a great tool to be able to start using. You know, I I know that we've got Microsoft Whiteboard and that it is advancing. It's going to also have live components, which are going to be useful for uh, various other things. But I am a big fan of Miro and the way that I can organize my content, marshal it, and bring people's attention um, to follow along with me as as I'm using that. So hopefully you have uh, found this useful for um, a quick look at a meeting optimized app and maybe your introduction into Miro. I uh, do encourage you to take a look at Miro.com and, and uh, just have a look at maybe the free license just to see what you think of the tool. Um, I'm using the consultant license which allows me to share it in different ways and, and have a few other features for managing the content. And you can get team licenses and enterprise licenses and all sorts of things to, to work together. But I found it to be a great tool for bringing in anonymous guests and allowing them to interact with the content as we're working together on the interactive whiteboard. So thank you again for tuning in. Um, if you like this kind of content, you know what to do and you know where to find me. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.